God, that moon makes me howl. I got here too early. Look at that. Good news is there's clear water running out though. You can see the oysters there being chewed. Tells me brim are coming up. Anyway, we'll move the car into a legal park and get in there. We're going to walk down to uh, the bottom where the bay meets this canal. Oh, that flush should be drawing a few fish out. And then as that tide lifts up, I'm going to come back up. But if it uh, doesn't actually work, if I don't get fish pretty quick, I'll, I'll move. Because I've got, I think it's about a 10.30 high. And what I want to do is, at five o'clock now, I want to hit and run, hit and run. Like if I don't find fish here within 20 minutes, I won't wait for this tide. I'll just move on. It's just gorgeous. Oh, look at that. What a ripple. Nothing's going on here. Okay, it's just getting a light enough to do a bit of filming. Um, I thought I'd start with this. Just tried a few spots already. No good. See how you can see Brim have been feeding off this. See the shells? There's two signs. Uh, couldn't find any signs on the flats. But here, there's two marks. They've been eating in here on the high. Now there's also movement out here along the rocks like little bait fish. So to me that means fish are in the area. See once again here, see the It's like where they come to brush their teeth. The camera probably won't pick that up, but there's just little tiny mussels in there. I was looking for pippy holes for where they've dug out but there wasn't any. So come over to the rocks and there seems to be a lot more life here. Yeah, look. Little crabs. Oops, I'm that. Ah, nice little guy. Ah, ah. He ate that one. <clears throat> yeah, so you got crabs under all the rocks. Look. One, two, three, four. Four little crabs there, you probably won't see them. I'll show you again when it's lighter. So we've got crabs, we've got all this shit. Hey. See that? That's come out of a brim's bum. So to me, from what I've seen so far, I'd say that's the fish are on, the, on these rocks. See this perfect example here. So they'll be out on that deeper section of the flat. What I was looking for though was uh, brim diggings on the flats as I come up. Unfortunately, there wasn't any. So, you can't see the signs, even though you want to keep and move on. You can see all the marks on the moss. And it's not slippery either, so. Um, you know what I'm saying? Grass doesn't grow on a busy path. The brim is feeding on rocks. If I can find any little reefs sticking out, anything like that, around the area, I should get a few. I'll go and get my gear and come back there first. Shell grip, but no. Once you get on this brim, on the flat, there's no digging. Like there should be a like a crater with shells in it, and that shows where the brim have been. Um, Pelican pulled up earlier. And there's a couple of shags out there, so there's birds working the water. That to me tells us fish, but they're just not feeding on these flats. You can see no crabs under the little rocks either. So I'd say they're not eating pippies at the moment, they're eating mussels and crabs. I'll go rig up my gear. I'm I don't know whether to come back. I might go and try another spot and then come back with the kind of waters on it. 
You got a lot of seed in there, look at this. Now this is a sign that I was looking for too, that's another type of crab. But as you can see, there's, there should be like big circle brim marks where they've been chewing on. And there is none, so... Still sticking with the rocks. Now I went out and had a look out on the... On the jetty over there in the main and the current was just too strong. So... By eliminating different structures, I've not seeing those signs. See around here, so you got the water comes in here, you think they'd be just here. But once again, there's no brim diggings. So, to me, I'm thinking they're not on the flats, they're not on the sandy flats. They could be on the muddy ones, mussel beds, but they're not on the sand. There was a lot of bait fish and mullet also around the um, around the rocks where there's no bait fish along here. Yeah. More, more signs of those crabs. So once you get along these rocks they're not slippery. They've been chewed on. So I, I'm pretty sure now that all the rocky reefs around here will hold fish. Let's see if we can find some weird little animals to show you. Right, go on. They're oysters of course. Hmm. Now how's that? The three rocks, no, nothing. Yet every rock on the other side was um, kind of a winner. Not too many over, but it's always good to see what's here. That's a weird animal. Sort of slug or mussel. Shellless mussel. Well, there's a stack of them. Look. They look juicy. I'm a lure fisherman, so I won't be using them, but just wanted to show you what, what the fish come in here for. So those little black mussels. They are the tim tam for the brim. That's an unusual one, I don't have a clue. Hmm. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, look at those clusters of them. See those brown blobs? It's an actual animal. Beautiful little oyster. What else? There's a weird little prawn that lives here. And there's a few different types of crabs. Nice to see. Oh, see. Toad. That's a good sign. So all the life seems to be around the rocks. I more look <clears throat> under these rocks to see more toads. Yeah, the bite's gonna come on. To see uh, what the chances of a fish being in here. Like, would he survive? Could he get food? And, wow, I'd love to know what they are. Like a shellless mussel. See? Got the body so they can grip on. There's no eyes, no nose, no head. It's changing. Once again, that's the black muscles here. There's very few here. That's because they're eating them all. Mm. Oh, we're in Sydney. That there's a little dealy bag. <laughs> I love it, it's even got little rabbit ears on it. Oh, crab. Now yeah, look, it's inundated with these little mussels. All around here. Last time I was here they had like a glass, not a glassy, but a really strange little prawn. Benny knew the name of them. Can't find any of them today though. Anyway, let's get back to fishing. Played his rock scissors and backing up the fish on the rocks. Now, I don't think where I'm going to go is crabs, mussels, these things. 
and shellfish and oysters. I haven't seen any little prawns. I'm pretty adamant that the there's fish holding on these rock walls, the rock ledges, so I'll head over there and when I get a hook up off, oh, I'll turn the camera on. What beautiful day. Winter in Sydney. Oh, I'm dead on the money about the uh, fish being on the rocks. I should have brought me, um, I should have brought my my uh, mount for the GoPro, I just walked along with it in my pocket. But what I did is I just went back to the rocks that I was on where I started, showing you the, how I was looking for fish. Put a little rubber on, it's not a real big cream, but I mean, once you, once you get one on the board, you've got a pattern. Now I put a I started with a bait breath and I got two little touches. So I swatched, swapped over to the old classic, what they call the poo eater. It's a Berkeley, it's a little Berkeley curl tail, power bait. And uh, I'd say thanks to Mickey Collins, Krusty Joe, probably Jorg, and a few other boys. It's one of the most famous little plastics on the Parramatta River. Anyway, that got us on the board and it confirmed my theory about I don't know where to put this. It confirmed my theory about the um oh, I the camera. About the fish holding on the rocks and eating all this weed here. I still worked those flats and there was no fish on them and there was no signs. Come around here and there's signs everywhere. I'm oh, a good one. Traced the place out, found the fish. Got two types of plastics in my pocket. Thought I had a blade in my pocket as well. Next cast, get a snag. Bust off. Didn't bring the hooks or the blade. Have to work it out when I get back there. Ooh. is only barrier council put up to stop pollution going into the harbour. It's one of them. Apparently that's enough. Then look at this. Milk, water bottle, water bottle, coffee cup, water bottle, water bottle, coke, primer, water bottle, water bottle, coffee cup, chocolate milk, Chocolate milk, water bottle, water bottle. Seen a pattern here. These aren't low life scumbag dumpers. These are us. Look, power bait, power aid, power aid, water bottle, water bottle, water bottle. Power aid. Look at it. This is the people that live in Sydney, what we do with our rubbish. And every square inch of our shoreline is covered in it. You see all sorts of things, you see condoms, drug bags, you like them they glow, look really cool as they float across the harbour. Oh, it's gone quiet, I just got back here, <clears throat> I just put the camera on then because there was a baby seagull squalling its head off on the boats. Now to me that's another sign of fish in here. Where you find the sea cows breeding on the old moored boats, that bay's usually holding. I'll just put another little poo eater on, a little Berkeley curl tail. Basically, 
what what I'm doing right now. The technique is the same technique as what I do for the cart. It's a little tiny ball sinker, number two drop shot hook, curl tail. And what I'm doing is an ammo twitch. It's like a prawn imitation. I'm just going one, two, three. Drop down, leave the slacking. Wait. And then just keep repeating it. One, two, three. We're looking for active fish, so casting like that. Now I've brought a little blade with me so I can get out wider because I think they'll be there's sun coming up, I think they'll be sitting on them boats. But what we'll do is we'll work the shoreline here. There you go. Didn't take long. As soon as I got back, it's a little flatty this time, so definitely gonna go to the blade. And that's the ammo twitch. He's a tiny little fella, but I mean, if you're getting into lure fishing and you you want to do it on the cheap, we got one small legal brim, little flathead. Um, pretty well, walk back here, turn the camera on, and got in. <sighs> Ooh, tide's getting me. Oh my wife, it's my job now, so change the tackle bag to a nice office style computer bag. Makes it feel like I really am working. And what we're gonna do is just keep kicking along here. Well, just like I thought, <clears throat> I never got a single bite across the flat. But when I come up to here, you can see all these poles, see all those little white dots around the around the muddy line that's uh brim chews they've been coming up here on the high and just chewing on these poles poles are fantastic structure so definitely been feeding on them i'll give this a little hit you can see every single one of them has had a brim chew and there's probably 20 poles here it's pretty well 20 cast Make sure you know there's nothing here. The beauty about poles is when they're on them, they're feeding, so. It's pretty, two, three twitches and pretty well covered each pole. When I come back, I'll use a blade, get out further right across the top points. We've seen uh, slime out off the rocks. Movement around the rocks. Nothing on the flats. You can see they're eating here on the high. They could be tucked right in on those pontoons. I think they're more on those moored boats out there though. Especially when I can hear all those baby seagulls. You can sort of feel it if they're here. I imagine it's a private jetty. Where is it? Keep off. No pedestrian access. <sighs> Good on ya. That's the sort of thing I like to do. Fire. Do nothing if someone owns it, like I think that one. Well, it's just a Rowan jetty. Unless it's uh, too poor condition. Right, here's the structure worth hitting. These boat ramps. They're all slant down. On the low tides, 
big broom. Love to just tuck into the back corner of them. Like poles, you pretty well got to get your lure right into it. As soon as I turn the camera off. Hmm. Not a real big fish, but I don't care. I don't even know what it is yet. Oh, another little bird. I was just about to switch over to the blade to get that bit more distance. Try and get around the boats, but you come off that jetty. So we've got nothing off poles, we've got one on a jetty and a couple on rocks. Not a big fish but he's fat. Once again, there's that little poo eater. <sighs> you can open up. Come on buddy. Hey, come on. Don't bite my line. Open up. Now, you can see all that shell grit. Whoops. Come on, mate. You can see all that shell grit there. Um, probably from here. Next time I'm just going to chuck you in. There he goes. Uh -huh. Power bait, curl tar. Basically, the identical rig that I use on my carp. Should have a little sink there somewhere. A free run ball sinker, drop shot hook, and the curl tar. Oh, just about to turn around. Okay, I switched to blade now. The reason being is the rocks are so far out I'll get snagged. Even with the rubbers I'll probably get snagged, I won't get out there, but this will get me my distance. Yep. And the basic rule of fun with land-based fishing with blades is we're going to work it about two-thirds of the way back and then we're going to wind it in before we hit the snags. All I'm doing is just shaking it, shaking it into the sand. First cast. It's only a little fish, but I just come down here to demonstrate how to find your fish. And we've done flats either side of it, nothing. Did poles where you've got nothing. And then we've come straight back here. Well, we actually got one off a little pontoon, off a, a thing. Self release. I wouldn't have reached that fish with the light rubber, so that's why I switched to the blade. He could have been a kilo broom for all I knew, so. Got halfway out there. Do it again, just let it sit. Shake it into the sand. And then a few hops. Try and draw it. Let it settle. Keep shaking. Don't forget, you only want to come about two thirds of the way in or you'll lose your lure. That's it, wind in. Move on. Ugly sweat. 
Ooh, it's getting a bit high. Beautiful morning. The longer I retrieve, the better for these blades, but at the same time, don't forget that reel. Two thirds winded in. You're getting a lot of hits in that closer area. Go back to the plastics. Yep, that's one. That was a little bump. So, basically, your blades are for your long game land base. Very tiny, these things, but. Oh, sorry, buddy. There's another one. Blades are your long game, and your plastics are your short game. You can even see around here they've been feeding on a lid. But we are going to move on because the fish aren't big enough. Um, you sit here all day and have fun, but we go and try another spot similar. Like now we've got a pattern. He's still there. That's something you've got to do on this tarot. You see a guy first sticking with a dog watch. And I kept this brim just to show you why they chew on the rocks. Have uh, a look at his teeth there. They grow, they get really long. So, what they do is they chew on these rocks. It's like the I like the toothbrush. They come in here on the high and they just chew. And they grind all those teeth down. Anyway, that's where I kept him for and I will let him go. I'm just going to swim straight out this crack, buddy, okay? There you go. But uh, just that little bit of knowledge about this green slime here. You can see the, where it's clean. Just knowing that, it puts me under a lot of brim. And you come up tomorrow and they could be all along that flat, but you'll see the signs that they've been along that flat. These little twitches I'm doing are only moving the blade inches. That was a little bump then. And the twitching's probably hitting it like just, it's more shaking it into the, that, and then, oh. And I'll do a few hops. Notice it's the wrist. The elbow stay still with the blade. There you go. Oh. <laughs> that was my. Oh, and again, that's my phone. I'm trying to get the rod in the camera so you can see it. Because that hookup should have been on the wrist as well. And this is where you can get caught. You see, I know there's fish following it. I can keep fishing in, but I'll lose it in the rock. So I'll bring it back in, go back out. I feel a little bit better. And the trick to when you're getting those little short bites like that is to probably go to a scent, start a catch scent. I think I'll redraw this one though. Oh, that was a good fish. What's going on? Elbows. I've got a catch scent on there. In my briefcase. Crab scent, perfect. Let's 
yeah. Last third, we don't, we don't push it. See, it's over the drop off. See the waves from over there. All right, there's some fish out there, so we better hang around a little bit longer. The sack sense. A little brown spot. I probably would have preferred a black, black one today, more of a muscle than a bait fish. <laughs> 